There we go. We're on it. All right. So hi there. I'm Elaine Lindsay and I'll be moderating for you tonight on this second episode of Talk Health. That's hashtag Talk Health, all one word. And we're here tonight with a group of wonderful chiropractors from all over North America. And we're going to introduce them to you and then I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Natalie Bosa. Well, I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Craig Hazel who is uh, near us in the other end of Ottawa, in Canada. And then uh, we have Dr. Denise Rollette. And you are in, whereabouts are you, Denise? We're in Hammond, Louisiana. Hammond, Louisiana. Very nice. I bet you have much better weather than us. Yes, we do right now. <laughs> Absolutely. And then I have uh, Dr. Nate Bloomy, And you are in? Indianapolis, Indiana. All right, and then we have Dr. Stacy Borkus, and you are in in Mina, North Dakota. Oh wow! Okay, so we really are covering a lot of North America. Now I will pass it off to uh, the main speaker here. That's Dr. Natalie Beauchamp. Take it away. All right, so. We have three Americans and two Canadians tonight, so this should be interesting. <laughs> and especially when it comes to, to health, because our systems are a little bit different. So welcome to the Google Hangout. And what I think I'm going to do, um, you know, this is um, something that uh, we do before a Hangout, is that we send survey questions to, to uh, you know, either our patients or to the public. And the Google Hangout, uh, the topic for this one is chiropractic and uh, mental health. So before we go over uh, the survey questions and the results, and I'm going to ask the doctors uh, what their opinions are on, if they're surprised about the results and so forth. But before, I think it, we, we should take a few minutes for um, each of the doctors to say a little bit more about uh, themselves. So quickly, Dr. Azel, do you mind uh, telling us a little bit more about you? Not a problem. Canadians always go first, don't they? Uh, I think so. Um, my name is Dr. Craig Hazel. I'm the owner and clinical director here at Synergy Chiropractic uh, Creating Wellness Center in Canada, Ontario. And I've been in practice now for 10 years. And uh, I have a family and pediatric-based practice. And we see a lot of children. 40% of our practice is children and uh, families. And uh, we're just having a blast here serving the people of Canada. Thank you. Denise? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Denise Roulette. I've been in Hammond, Louisiana almost 30 years, so it'll be 30 years uh, this, this uh, May. I practice with my husband. Um, he is also a chiropractor, and we as well uh, specialize in pediatrics, family wellness practice. Um, it's just a, a, probably my favorite part of the day. We also have a pediatric office uh, across the street. That's where most of our kids are seen, and it uh, just keeps the uh, volume down just a little bit in the main office, but we're having a blast as well. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Denise. Dr. Nate? Yes, I'm Dr. Nate Bloomy, as, uh, as we said before, in Indianapolis, Indiana. I've been in practice just uh, just at 11 years, just, uh, just celebrated 11 years in our office. I practice with my brother, a uh, younger brother named Cole Bloomy, uh, and our goal is truly to serve our community and help them grow uh, in a way of, of health and wellness that fits our model, which is be fit, eat right, think well. Our catalyzing statement in the office is a legacy of absolute health for every family. Love it. Stacy. Hi, I'm Dr. Stacy Borkus, and I'm in Minot, North Dakota. I've been in my practice for six years since I graduated, and I have two associates in my office who practice alongside me. So we do have a very family-oriented office. We are uh, very wellness-focused, uh, and we enjoy what we do every day. Awesome. Thank you. And I, again, Dr. Natalie Beauchamp. I'm in uh, the east part of Ottawa. I've been in practice um, 18 years now, so having fun with it. And um, like Nate, I will say that our main focus is to service uh, our community. And one of my mandates with the Expo, um, which is a big event we organize in the city, is to help 
um, make Ottawa the healthiest uh, city in Canada. So that's that's a big mandate, and that's why we have a, a lot of work to do. And thankfully, Dr. Azel is at the end on the other end of town to help me uh, with that mandate. So uh, thank you for the introduction, guys. So what I'm going to do is um, just go over the survey questions and. I think um, the answers were there was no doubt uh, where the scales were, was tipping. So the first question was, have you or are you currently experiencing symptoms of anxiety, depression, lack of focus, extreme fatigue, or general feeling of unhappiness? And a resounding 88% said that they do feel uh, this way. So the stats are, are pretty high on that. And it would go with um, with the average, um, as you might have seen in the blog I wrote on mental health and the history of chiropractic. It says that 80% um, of Canadian, um, you know, are feeling that way. So it would be congruent with the statistic. And then on a scale of one to ten. One being no effect and ten being high effect. How did the above mentioned symptom and feeling affect your productivity in your life? And you know, it was um, average of six point three was noted here. Then the next question, which I think we can start discussing, is what methods or mean did you use or are you currently using to address your symptoms? So. The one that scored the highest was holistic health professional, i.e. chiropractor, naturopath, and acupuncturist. So that, that one was higher with 29%. And the second higher after that were mental health professional, as in counselors, uh, for 11%. And then self-help, so meditation or, or books or affirmation was another 11%. Uh, um, so I think we can see from those results that people are more inclined to use holistic uh, methods, um, you know, for for taking care of themselves. And uh, in the other section, I know some people have written down physical activities, um, more exercise, and a combination of of all of the above. So um, I'm going to ask um, Dr. Uh, Stacy actually to comment on those statistics. Is it pretty congruent with what you're seeing in in your practice, Stacy? You know what. I the 88% the statistic was a little bit startling to me to know that 88% of the population, at least those who answered the survey, are experiencing symptoms like that. And when I take a step back and I think about it in my office, I think that if I were to ask that question of people directly, if they were honest, it, it probably is a pretty realistic statistic, which is really important for me to become aware of. One of the focuses in our office and what we teach patients when they come in is that we'll do whatever it takes to help help you achieve better health. And one of the aspects that we include that, that really addresses that is simply asking what's the best part of your day or what are you grateful for today to keep their mental attitude healthy and positive. But I, I never really considered what type of an impact or how many people would be impacted by something like that on a daily basis. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it was pretty uh you know, surprising, and the the I think the general feeling of an unhappiness is probably the one that made people choose uh, that answer. So um, I'm gonna go ahead with the other two, and then we can dig a little bit deeper. But the fourth question was, do you believe that the current healthcare system in Canada and the U.S. has the resources and services necessary to help people with mental health issues? If not, what resource or services would you like to see available? So, uh, again, 68% uh, said that they didn't feel like the system was there to give them enough resources. And um, ad basically, they said that uh, the services that they needed were not available. And the last one, again, uh, pretty clear as a result here. The question was, do you feel that the current healthcare system provides enough financial support for mental health? And 86% said no. So I know that uh, personally, and Dr. Azel can, can probably corroborate that fact, is that oftentimes people would like some help, uh, but if it's not covered through their work or there's a limited amount covered through their work, they just feel like they're not uh, getting enough help. Dr. Azel, what, what do you uh, think about that? Yeah, I would agree. I think that largely the 
I guess the, the funding that goes towards mental health has been come under scrutiny in recent years because more and more people are um, it's becoming talked about, you know, in, in Canada through our national uh, uh, telecommunications company, they have a large thing where they dedicate an entire day to talking about mental health. Uh, we've seen in recent years athletes that have taken their lives. We've seen uh, young people more and more as the result of things like bullying and other things. So it's become a hyper focus in terms of what uh, we've had to draw attention to. And I think that more and more awareness is becoming, but unfortunately the services and the capabilities is lacking when it comes to uh, support in, for a lot of these folks. So I think we're starting to see it moving and, tr and trending in that direction, but yes, I think it's very underappreciated, under, uh, under, under supported and underfunded. Mm. And one of, um, one of the comments from one of the person who took the survey that, uh, you know, he was just saying how if a person is stressed out about paying his medical bill, how can a person, you know, really focus on, on getting better? Because I, I, you know, it become a, a, a vicious uh, circle. If you're stressed out, you're not being able to uh, to focus on on getting better and and uh, and so forth. So um, that was one of the points that was experienced. So we've all been in practice for 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 quite some time and. I think uh, we all know that most people don't knock on our doors as chiropractor to get help with mental issues. Uh, heck, they don't even know that we can help for with headaches and energy and, and so forth. So um, I think a lot of time they're what I call the positive side effect of adjustments. And um, I'd like for each of us to maybe share uh, what we see in our offices and the changes that we can see. But before we do that, um, I think I want to uh, get on Dr. Azel um, to explain what is the concept and why in the world would chiropractic, you know, which is seen as a back pain relief kind of profession, would help with mental health. So Craig, I'm, I'm starting you with, a, with the big one. All right. Well. As chiropractors, we live our lives through our nervous systems. Through our five senses, we experience, integrate, and process every single thing in our existence and every single experience that we come in contact with in our environment on a daily basis. And it's through this nervous system that we live our lives. And if there is interference in the way in which we are sensorily processing the environment, perceiving it, integrating it, and then making the appropriate response, that interference can ultimately result in a garbage in, garbage out kind of situation because what we get is an altered input from the sensory input, which ultimately the brain perceives, tries to make the appropriate response, but it ends up being, because it's such an altered input, it ends up being an altered output. And the result is we don't adequately, appropriately, and uh, efficiently process that environment. And the result is we end up to start to... Uh, create a negative patterning that can happen when it's like you trying to sit here and listen to this Google Hangout when you've got Metallica playing in your ear like it's just constant noxious noise and if you've got that interference in your ability to listen to this conversation well that interference is ultimately going to start to affect you on a mental basis and so I always say that the I use an analogy in my office all the time it's like if you've ever had a pebble in your shoe what's your state of mind like Everybody always says it drives me crazy. I said, exactly, because it's a, it's a thing in your shoe that's causing pressure on a nerve in your foot that literally affects the way in which your brain is functioning and the mood and all your cognitive abilities. It's the only thing you can think about is getting that rock out. And so when it comes to chiropractic, and we start to talk about the role and the function of the nervous system in human potential and human health, we've got to make sure that this thing is functioning as optimally as possible, free of interference. And the only way that we can do that is to locate and correct and, de and de locate, detect and correct the cause of that interference, which lies in the, the actual central nervous system, the, the, the vertebral subluxation, if you, it is what we refer to it as. Uh, it is the principal interference to the function of the, of the body and, and a function of the nervous system. So again, we don't perceive our environment appropriately and the result is we, we create a, a negative response, which is is the result. Mm -hmm. 
So Craig, uh, I'm right to say that uh, a couple of months ago you had someone and you shared that uh, that story with me, someone that came into your your office. Tell us a little bit more about how this person was and how she is now and how much that's changed her life. It's huge and I honestly I believe she's she's listening in tonight um, because it's been a transformation for her and I am so excited for her because here is a woman that has gone through nearly 12 years of, uh, even more I believe, of excruciating pain and discomfort. So again, here's where we start to see the intimacy between the physical body and the mental body. And for years, you know, doctors tried to separate the two. They said that there's no way in which the body can affect the mental health and there's no way in which the mental health can affect the body. And I always say, if you've ever had, I'm, I better tread lightly here, but if you've ever seen um, women at the time of the month, then some of them can, their body chemistry can just change and they can turn into, uh, you know, the once a month witch syndrome. And I'm saying that very cautiously, but the point of it is, <laughs> the point of it is how the physical body can affect the mental state. And so, you know, alcohol, the changing the body chemistry can affect the mental state and cognition and, and the appropriation of making decision making and, and coordination and all those things. So here is a woman that has had an exorbitant amount of pain, distress. Um, again, she realizes that a lot of aspects of her life, just as simple things like washing and having a physical relationship with her spouse and having the ability just to walk to the corner and get her mail and to work and to feel like she's contributing in a positive way when that physical aspect of her life has been taken away it has a very serious and devastating effect to the mental health and so what we start to realize is that when we start to remove that and we start to allow that body to function and let's face it when your body is feeling good and fluid and mobile and everything else it totally positively affects your mental health um, and so this woman, uh, you know, she had gone through a battery of different testing and basically they told her that she's going to have to live with it for the rest of her life. She's going to have to continue to take boatloads of medications in order just to suffice with the pain and the discomfort and the numbness and the tingling. And um, in actual fact, she started taking so many medications that it actually started to cause her heart to, her heart to falter. So in December of 2013, um, she was told to make plans for her uh, for the end of her life and she actually went and bought a tombstone. Um, the day, the week that I met her, she was actually going that week to pay for it and to um, make the arrangements but glad to say even after her second adjustment she was able to walk in here and after her third adjustment she was able to drive for the first time in a year. And so to see the transformation in her from a mental health standpoint simply because we've affected the physical self, again, remove the interference to her body, allow her body to function at a higher level, has had profound effects on her mental state and her hope, her positivity and search for um, a solution that is going to come from within rather than from the outside in through the use of medications and therapy and all the things that she was staring down. So. Um, it's, it's been an amazing thing and, and it, I'm very blessed and honored to be a part of that but again it, it's I don't accept the credit for that it's just simply that we have a body that is designed to be well and it's designed to heal but when there's interference in it it cannot heal and it cannot be well you can you cannot be fully well if you're not fully well adjusted and that's a simple fact so when we as chiropractors we all have these stories we all have seen these these transcendence in, in a physical and mental health standpoint and um, it's just simply our job is to locate de and detect and correct the, the interference to it and allow her body to function better and that's what happens that is the miracle of chiropractic wow that is that is an amazing amazing story and I, I hope that uh, your patient is, is listening and uh, you know it's it's I'm happy that uh, she has regained her, her life back um, Dr. Nate, um, were you surprised at all with this, the, the surveys and the statistic? Oh, and by the way, for people that are listening to this um, Google Hangout Live, don't be shy. Ask us questions. We're here to 
answer questions that you might have when it comes to your health and especially mental health. So we'd love to hear um, some, uh, you know, some feedback from you or some questions or some comments. Uh, that would be great. So, Dr. Nate, um, first of all, first question would be: Are you surprised with the the, the, the answers from the survey? And what um, what how do would you you know? Um, expand on the connection between the adjustment and, and the balance uh, uh, in the brain. That's a great point. Uh, am I surprised by what the survey said? Absolutely not, especially the point about exercise being such a huge part of people's mental health. And when you take a look at any study that's ever been done, exercise has beat every psychotropic medication ever prescribed for depression or anxiety. Exercise has always beat it, and we've got to figure out why. And so when we take a look at what chiropractic and how that relays in with that, we've got to recognize the fact that the body, the spine specifically, has more uh, sensory cells than any other place in our body, specifically what are known as proprioceptors or position sensors. For our body to be able to best protect itself, it has to know exactly where we are. I've always said that's why football players, and yes, I mean the, uh, you know, the, the, the ones that use the hands, you Canadians, the football players in America are, are, are great athletes because at some point their brain-body connection was operating at a higher sense. And they were able to grow and adapt and mature through a rate that, that, that happened differently than, than 95, 99% of the rest of the population. When they understand exactly where their body is, their brain knows exactly how best to adapt and engage in the environment. And as Craig said, the best, you know, the, the biggest factor is how well our brain's able to perceive the environment around us. If it can get an accurate picture of what's going on around it, then it's going to it's going to respond 100% accurately every time. So the chiropractic adjustment, what that does is helps restore movement to specific areas of the spine that haven't been moving properly for days, weeks, months, in some cases years. And each movement of the spine stimulates a portion of the brain that helps balance our body's ability to coordinate and express health. Now, the problem is when we lose that mobility in that segment, right, so if we talk about just, if we, if we get very barbaric or very simple about it, we just call it a, a fixation. Two joints that aren't moving quite properly. If those things aren't moving properly, not only do we not get stimulation to that portion of our brain which helps us with coordination and, and, and function, it stimulates a portion of our brain which leads to what we know as the fight or flight cascade or the cortisol cascade. Now, when we get to that point, we start to recognize that people specifically you know, with anxiety and, and, and depression and these, these mental health issues are experiencing these feelings of despair, of helplessness. That's a portion of what our body goes through as it goes through the fight or flight response. So each chiropractic adjustment as we restore motion and restore energy and, and what we call nutrients to that portion of our brain which helps us then coordinate and facilitate health and function. As we restore that movement and decrease that nerve disturbance that's going on, we're allowing the brain to flourish and therefore decreasing the amount of stimulation that's going to that part of the brain that's causing more fight or flight response and more cortisol cascade hormones which lead to things such as cardiovascular disease, cancers, and site-specific, uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and site-specific cancers. How that relates with mental health then, you know, we can take a step further and, and, and recognize that as people are feeling these senses of, 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 of despair, their body isn't moving as well, they have less desire to move, less energy to move, and now they're kind of compounding. We feel uh, you know, and often, often they feel that they're they're on that downhill slope. They're snowballing. Things are getting worse and worse and worse, and there's no chance of them to recover. Yeah, and I think you're you're bringing on a, a, an excellent uh, excellent point, Nate. And I'm I'm sure you've probably um, heard Dr. Chestnut talk about the fact that we're always in flexion as well, and there's part of our brain that are not just from the sheer fact that we're sitting all day and unch over and inflection, we're not stimulating some part of our brain. So it goes along uh, along these lines. So um, yeah, exercise is, is, um, is an amazing uh, way to activate the brain. Uh, Dr. Stacy, um, question I'm going to ask you is um, how how have you, what have you seen in your office, because you've been in practice for, for, for six years, mm -hmm. and um, when when you first be became a chiropractor, were you expecting to see 
all the changes you were seeing with patients. And I'm asking you because mm -hmm. you know you've been in practice the least amount of time, and I, I'm just curious to get your feedback uh, because uh, some of us have been in practice for longer, but. I know that uh, myself, I was not anticipating the response I was getting when it came to, um, you know, a bit uh, like Dr. Hazel was, was saying that I had patients coming to me and, and telling me that how I had, you know, chiropractic had given their life back and they say, no, no, Natalie, I really mean my life back because they yeah. were seriously uh, considering taking their lives away. Can you tell us a bit more about that? I I didn't come anywhere close to anticipating the changes that chiropractic could have for, for some of my practice members. I I began in chiropractic knowing that it could help people and their overall health and wellness. I didn't know how specific it could get. And I have two patients in my office who come right to mind when discussing mental health. The first is a, a story actually very similar to Dr. Hazel's, which is um, kind of interesting to hear because we know that if it's in two offices on two doctors on this Google Hangout, it must be going on all over the place, which is exciting. Um, but a patient who came in, headaches, fatigue, stiffness, soreness, um, relationship with her husband was failing simply because of the fact that she wasn't interested in physical intimacy and she was never in a good mood. And, and she didn't hold down a job at that point in time. In fact, most days she didn't even want to get out of bed. Over a period of 90 days in the office, the transformation she saw was incredible. And um, she has an amazing video on, on the About Real Health page because of the, the way she wants to share her story with others. But after 90 days, she had started getting up every single day and exercising. By the end of just a little bit longer, I think it was as, maybe as short as four months, she would actually put out job applications and is now holding down a full-time job and the relationship with her husband has improved significantly. And so it was a complete transformation of this person who does not have a healthy relationship and is in bed all day to someone who loves their work, is excited to go home at the end of the day and spend time with their spouse, um, who loves to exercise and has gone off all medications she was previously taking in the process. And so an amazing transformation. The second patient is, um, is a really short story. It, it was a man that came in and never mentioned mental health issues. He came in for back pain, um, which we see quite frequently. But after 12 adjustments on his rescan and his reexamination that day, we have a questionnaire that we have them fill out, and we ask them about the changes that they've experienced. And have you noticed changes in this, yes or no, this, yes or no? And at the very bottom, there's a, there's a box that says other. And not very often does anyone fill out this box, but he had filled it out very completely. And, and he had marked this box that said other, and he went on to explain how he was kinder to his wife, how at the end of every day he was so tired and so frustrated that he came home and he wasn't kind to her and he wasn't kind to their children, and that after the course of one month, his family had commented on how much better of a dad and how much better of a husband he was. And he had tears in his eyes as he was explaining this to me because I couldn't read it. I, I, I just asked him to tell me about it. Um, and the tears in his eyes as, as he just said, you know what, I'm a better dad and I'm a better husband, made me realize how impactful what, what we do can be for not just that individual. I don't even know about his back pain. I'm, I'm, sure, it's, I'm sure it's better, but he didn't care anymore. This was about his life, and this is about his family's life. And um, that hit, hit me real hard because... I know that that's happening in other families too that we may never hear about, but but it has that potential and it has that possibility. And when it comes to that mental health realm, um, it that's an amazing story, and I, I can't imagine it getting a whole lot better than that. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, and I think you you, you nailed it. And I think. Our society is, you know, like you said, I, I mean, I, I can think of situation where the mother um, has headaches all the time, now she's depressed, she's on medication, so how can she be a good mom to her two kids and a good wife to her husband and so forth? And I think oftentimes in, in, in the health professional world is that we forget that attached to this condition is a human being. 
is a human being with a family and loved one and co-workers and so forth. So I think, uh, you know, what's B.J. Palmer's quote, you never know what you're going to say and do and how it's going to affect the lives of millions tomorrow. And I think that resonates a lot. And because mental illness is not as obvious as somebody's got a limp or somebody's got, you know, something that's very, um, you know, visible, I mean, a lot of people are, are scarred and are, are carrying that pain with them uh, every day. And I think this is why we create those Google Hangouts is, is to talk about these things. And I think in Canada, as Dr. Hazel was saying, mental illness is, is become a little bit more, um, uh, quite a bit more talked about. But what are we going to do about it? And I think our, our purpose as chiropractor is to be there for patients and become a tool for them to, first of all, you know, I, 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 we call it uh, in the office turning their power on because this is what we do all day is turn people's nervous system on so they can um, really experience life to the fullest and be all that they can be. And, you know, as chiropractors, uh, we look at lifestyle and exercise and so forth. So, um, you know, thank you so much for sharing those, uh, those stories. Um, Dr. Denise, um, in your practice, because you've been in practice for, for, for quite some time, which is awesome, uh, with your husband, can you think of you know, stories uh, that you'd like to share uh, with the people that are, that are listening? Uh, because I think it's when people hear stories similar to theirs that they can say, hey, geez, maybe there's, there's uh, possibilities for me to, to have a, a life-changing event like that. Absolutely, Natalie. So often I think it, it comes down to the sleep process. You know, with mental health, when people are not resting through the night, it, it's just, it takes over their entire being. And one of the stories that, that rings a bell, it actually was involving an infant that um, the, the child, luckily they had grandparents here that lived in town because they would pretty much pass the child from one grandparents, then the next night they, the next grandparents would have, and then the parents, because this child basically screamed from the moment he woke up to the to the moment that he went to that he slept maybe 15 minutes at a time, and um and and by this time the time that we saw them the child was easily four months old so you can imagine you know what devastation in this family no one could help them obviously the the uh, pediatricians just weren't able to help at all and um. So we usually do quite a bit of testing on, on adults and children. Um, we use a, what's called a surface EMG. It's a computerized test to evaluate how the nervous system is doing. And um, when the child came in, obviously it was blood curdling scream from the, the moment he walked in. So we kind of forfeited and, and bypassed a lot of those uh, tests and just adjusted the child. And it was complete silence, you know, after that. And uh, this was many years ago when we ran into the, the child and his mother, uh, probably a year ago, and the mother reminded us of, of uh, you know, the, his screaming and, and, and just how devastating it was. Well, by one adjustment, the child, you could hear him take a physical breath and just completely relax. And, and uh, from that point on, he, he never had uh, any more screaming belts or anything like that. But I truly think most of mental health issues come, come down to the fact that we're not getting proper rest at night. That's one of the, the biggest things that we see in our office um, is that that's the first question I tell them, that ask them is that how they're sleeping. And 90% and of our patients are, are, they'll sleep two hours and up and two hours and up. And, and with the adjustments, I, I explained to them as well that um, you, before you see changes in your headaches, in your back pain, and in the issues that you're having, your digestive issues, that's the first thing that we look for is where you're sleeping through the night. And you can just see the, the changes in these people, women that by their fourth or fifth adjustment, they'll suddenly you know, be dressing a little nicer, wearing makeup, their posture is better because they're getting that full night's rest. So. I think that's one of the biggest issues, and the only option that they have at this point is, is medication, you know, unless they understand sometimes with meditation, yoga, things like that, but when their nervous system is so off kilter and, and just so uh, devastating to their body, you know, sleep is one of the last things that come to them. So, mm -hmm. so Denise, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing the topic of medication because uh, let's segue into this, and again, you're in the States, I'm in Canada. And I would say that in my practice, when we do a health history, um, 
everybody that's over the age of 40 is on some type of medication. So yeah. cholesterol lowering medication, blood pressure uh, medication. And the big thing that we've seen a raise in the last five to 10 years is antidepressants. So it's always you know, baffling to me the amount of people that are antidepressants. So that's a trend that we see in, in Canada. Do you see a lot of that in, in the US as well? Absolutely. And so much of it is, as we've been talking about, is nervous system related. But as, as, a, as a nation, I'm sure it's the same way in Canada, the foods that we are eating are just loaded with excitotoxins. You know, that you're, I name them Doritos and fast foods and all that. And it has such a depressive, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, symptom after that. When you're not eating correctly, there's no way that the body can function correctly. So, yes, positively. Yeah. And, and again, the food, we, we, we may want to touch on that. And actually, I'll, I'll um, ask Dr. Nate, um, first of all, I think, Nate, you have another story that you would like to share. And after, if you can uh, talk a little bit more about you know, what you see being in the U.S. as well and, and, and the link that you see with, with food, because this is something, uh, you know, because we're all wellness uh, chiropractor, that lifestyle is very important. Um, uh, you know, so do you want to elaborate on that aspect? Absolutely. I think that this, uh, this story will probably hit both of those points. Uh, we've got uh, a young gal in her office named, named uh, late 20s, graduated college, uh, got her dream job right away. She was flying two weeks out of every month over to Europe. Uh, doing a job that she loved. She came into our office, as a lot of people do, complaining of head uh, headaches. She had a lot of uh, neck pain. She she actually used the phrase, I carry my stress right here, as we as chiropractors hear so often. Um, as we got to know Karen, we used some of that technology that Denise was discussing. Uh, you know, we had the ability to take a look at her, how her autonomic nerve system was functioning. And what we got to know about Karen was that not just was her was her body expressing physical symptoms, but there were portions of her autonomic nerve system that were experiencing significant amounts of distress. The great thing about the scans that we utilize in our office, and I know that that, uh, that most of us on this on this hangout utilize the uh, the subluxation station, we're able to take a look at specific organ sets that correlate with with different areas of the spine. And when we got to know Karen better, we recognized that the area of her spine uh, that was screaming out the most had a lot to do with some of the things that she complained about, but didn't ever put together could be served by the chiropractic adjustment. She said, for instance, I've got these headaches, I've got this pain here, I love this job. She goes, but I just don't know how much longer I can do it. I'm exhausted, I'm physically zapped, I've got nothing left, I'm not even 30, and I, I think I've got to switch careers. Well, less than three months in, it was in fact five days before Christmas of 2010, uh, we, we did our next progress assessment with her, and, and the first question we always ask is, what are you most pleased about with your care here in her office? And Karen's response wasn't, uh, wasn't necessarily what we would expect. Her response was, I love my job again, exclamation point, exclamation point. And I said, Karen, tell me about this. You came in for headaches and these other things. Tell me about what's going on. And she said, uh, yeah, 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 the headaches are much better, virtually gone. She goes, what I love is the fact that my energy is back. And when we take a look at where her scan showed us from her first visit was that her areas of, of her adrenal glands were completely stressed and, and, and just totally taxed. She was suffering from adrenal fatigue. Now, a big part of that had to do with the fact that Karen was diagnosed as a diabetic at age 8. At this age, you know, less than 30, she was carrying around and wearing an insulin pump with her 24 hours a day, every day. We worked with Karen not just with, with exclusively with chiropractic adjustments for those first three months, but continued to work with her, and were able to help decrease her need for inside or outside-in insulin or use from that insulin pump by up to 60% most months. And that's by talking with her on the foods she should be eating and shouldn't be eating, especially as a diabetic, but just as a human being, basically, how she can travel, live on the go, and what she can be eating in places when she's in France, England, or in an airport in Atlanta. So as we recognize those things, we've got to have ways to assess, are we addressing the nerve system disturbance that are affecting those specific organs? For Karen, we were able to do that ex exclusively with this, the technology we use in our office, that inside subluxation station. So I feel that's a very important, important part of a chiropractor is being able to assess and know when to adjust, when not to adjust, and then being able to correlate specific things, you know, and recognizing that we either are addressing them and they're getting better or they're being affected in a positive way, or if they're not, we've got to change our methods. Well, for sure. 
Um, thank you, Dr. Nate. So we've got a question question from a from a listener here um, about the technology. So uh, the five offices that are on this Google Hangout are using a technology called the Insight Subluxation Station. And what it does, uh, so people are understand a little bit more, is measure the state and the function of the nervous system. Because um, almost just 15% of the nervous system will, will perceive pain. So by the time the body gives us signal that something is wrong, it might have been there for quite some time. So the technology we're using is helping us measuring, first of all, with you know the HRV, uh, our uh, general adaptation to, to stress, and then with the surface EMG, uh, the communication between the brain and the organs, and then with the muscle scan, um, posture balances of the, the skeleton. So all these are measures that are only done in chiropractic offices to reflect the state of the nervous system. And I know when I get, you know, spouse of patients say, oh, I don't need a chiropractor, I feel great. Great, let's test you, let's scan you, and if your scan shows no interference, you're not only feeling good, you're functioning properly. And that's the big difference. I think people are, are, are so trained to go with symptoms and I also I was just giving a, a lecture earlier today to a government a group here downtown Ottawa and you know a person doesn't go to bed Friday night without cancer and gets up with it uh, Saturday morning. So we can't just rely on our symptoms and that's why those tools are all about the function of the nervous system. And one of the questions asked was um, if was there any contraindication with uh, people that have prosthetics when it comes to the scan and, and the answer is no. It's not like a, a, an MRI or a CAT scan. It doesn't uh, give any, um, you know, uh, electricity for lack of a better term of, of, of resonance uh, magnetic um, it is capturing the uh, energy if you want from your nervous system so uh, even people that have prosthetic uh, can uh, easily do the test so um, you know on that note we invite people that are listening to that if you've never seen uh, a chiropractor this is what we do in our office uh, is do a, a, a health history to see what's going on with you but really um, using this technology to measure the function and then monitor so we can get uh, truly a, a process of, uh, of all this. So, um, My next question actually is going to, going to be to, um, to Dr. Razel. So question that we're, we were asked uh, on the survey, if somebody is already on an antidepressant, how do they go about getting off of it? And the person was saying that her medical doctor uh, is not uh, doesn't seem to be too willing to help her with that process. So, what would you say to somebody that wants to potentially get off the drug, find uh, ways um, to for natural solutions? Um, I think to to answer that, I would go back and um, touch on something that Nate had uh, commented on, and that is just that. For starters, we have to make sure that everybody that's viewing understands that what we're saying here is that chiropractic is about finding out what is what is an essential requirement for you to be healthy. You need good food, you need to exercise, you need fresh air, you need good clean water, and you need to have an optimum functioning nervous system. Those are critical in order for you to express health. If any one of those is not in its fullest entirety, then you're going to start to express symptom sickness, disease, and illness. So what we're saying here is that if we can provide people with the opportunity to support their health in a profound way, sometimes and if folks are at the point where they're, you have to address all of those components. And if you're if you're not, then we're missing a boat. Let's say that somebody is now addressing all of those things. They're still having some mental health challenges. That doesn't dismiss the fact that they need to talk about it and they need to actually get some conversation. But let's say that somebody is on a psychotropic drug and they're looking to get off of it. From a, a legality standpoint, we cannot, it's outside of our scope of practice to tell them to stop. What we can say, though, is we're going to help support you through this process by making sure that all of these other elements are in place, and we're going to support you with that. Let's work with your physician, your psychiatrist, your, your GP, or whoever it is, to actually start to work yourself off of that. The truth of the matter is sometimes if, if you were to try and drop 
psychotropic medications, as powerful as they are, that can have pretty profound effects and pretty hardcore crashes in terms of your overall mood and overall uh, mental function. So it has to be done gradually. It has to be done and guided through. Um, I, I think that uh, it's got to be a multifactorial and a multidimensional and a multi-practitioner approach where it's you-centered. Your entire health and wellness team is, is working together with you to help you because it, it's all about you and working towards that goal. So I think from the standpoint of, of supporting you on the side of what we can and then helping you and guiding you with the support of other practitioners, I think it is possible. I think it is plausible. As Nate was saying, when your body is in a stress state, you don't produce serotonin. You give up concentration at the expense of, of, of attenuation. What I mean by that is if you're in a stress state, the last thing you're thinking about is long division. You're thinking about exit points, so that anxiety points raises up. Um, you can become unhappy because from a your body's just not producing the right amount of dopamine. Why? Because your body chemistry is out of balance. Not because it's missing something, but because your nervous system is not functioning properly and it's not producing the right amount in the right quantities for the given uh, environment that you're in. So, um, my that would be my answer: is that we've got to work together towards the common goal. I uh, totally agree with you, Dr. Rizzo, and I think the person who was asking the question was asking because his physician was not willing to do that. And it's happened to me in the practice as well, and as you said, it's not within our scope of practice to, to you know, tell a patient to get off any medication. Uh, but I've had some patients stop on their own because they decided so. And I think it's important that people know that you know, those five components we were talking about are important, but there's also um, nutritional support that can help rebalance those neurotransmitters. So the um, decrease in the intake of the medication doesn't have to go uh, cold turkey because it's not recommended to do that because those are very addictive uh, substances and it will most likely create a, a crash. Um, so I personally know that we've worked with uh, our local naturopath, uh, which they have uh, you know a greater scope of practice in Canada to help with that and successfully um, reduce or taking off uh, people the medication. So for the people that are listening and and you want uh, to potentially uh, you know, uh, change your lifestyle and potentially think about that. That's, uh, you know, having all these healthcare pro provider on your team, I think, are very valuable. And, um, you know, you don't have to do it alone. And there are tools to, to help you not to make it uh, too too hard on, on you uh, per se. Dr. Stacy, anything you want to add to this in terms of, um, you know, because I know you're you're in the states, and I know rules and regulations are, are a little bit different. But have you ever encountered something like that, and and how did you, you know, handle it? Very simply, find find a medical doctor who is willing and has that perspective. If you're if you're working with a medical doctor who doesn't have the same goals as you, you need to find a new medical doctor. Um, not that that one is a bad medical doctor or doing things wrong, they're just not a good fit for you. And so um, I have worked pretty hard to create relationships with two specific medical doctors in our area who understand the perspective that, that patients from my office are going to be looking for and are willing to, to work with them in that way. But you need to find someone who's on your team um, and helping you achieve your health goals, not just doing things the way they're used to. For sure. I, I would, if I, sorry, if I, could add, if I could add to that, uh, Stacy's absolutely right. You as a individual, a consumer of healthcare, hire and fire all of your healthcare practitioners. And so if and that goes for Canada too, because in Canada we feel like we're almost obligated to follow the direction of our general physician because A, there's such a, a lacking amount and, and we're scared almost in many cases, people are scared to actually leave their practitioner for fear that they won't find another one. But the fact of the matter is, is that you have the right as a consumer of healthcare to hire and fire any practitioner that you come in contact with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was going to say, Craig, that uh, oftentimes a lot of patients say that they keep their physician, they listen to their recommendation, and then they'll go about whatever they think is right for them. They just have them because in Canada, um, I don't know how many times a week I'm being asked, do you know of a, a, a good medical doctor that uh, would 
would have a more open mind. And, and I do know some, but they're not taking any new patients. So the system in, in Canada makes us a little bit less vulnerable. But again, uh, as I was talking, uh, you know, to this at this lunch and learn today, um, ended up the, the session saying that you have to become your own health advocate. You can't give the power to, of your overall health to anybody else but you. So you do have to find the people to be on your team. And you know, I think we cannot ignore the psychologist uh, in in this equation to make sure that you know uh, we all have issues to to work through when there's anxiety and depression and so forth and that's why those practitioners have to be part of of the team and 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 I think you know we've we've said it but it, we have to work together to the well-being and it's different components that will give us um, the results uh, for sure so all right um, dr. Denise um, I know you've mentioned um, uh, a lot of kids in your practice and I'm a little bit um, you know curious if you have any stories to share other than the one that you share with us earlier in term of um, I mean I'm seeing some mental health issues in now like you know teens like 11 12 13 year old girls as girls especially it seems in my practice so you know I think that youth is another huge component that you know we haven't really addressed so do you want to elaborate on that aspect a little bit absolutely um, we do see a lot of teenagers in our office and they are a different breed I'll give you that you know and uh, once uh, we have raised teenagers our daughters are 27 and uh, 25 now but watching them go through the teenage years and watch it because you forget you know it was a long time for us as, as doctors but watching them go through and even just you know my children were adjusted they ate healthy but they still had issues as as all teens do but hands down, things like depression, things like, and I keep going back to the sleep, um, the difficulty in sleep, where these teens, a lot of them have the electronics right in their rooms, the, uh, the computers, they've got iPhones next to them, they're texting at all hours of the night. Again, I, I always go back to sleep <clears throat> because it's impossible for them to rest well. Then their parents are in their in their room at 6 a.m. trying to get them up and getting to school when they just haven't had a, a full night's sleep. That just trickles on. Then they're running out the door with no breakfast. And um, the lunches at our school, I don't know about in Canada, but the lunches in, in the schooling here is, is just, you know, not, not good at all. So then they're getting bad nutrition on top of that. So even even the our, I call them my chiropractic kids, uh, you know, are still having trouble with with mental health issues and, and even some depression issues. So we again we've we've clarified that that we have to uh, address all the areas. It can't just you can have a perfectly working nervous system and get adjusted every week, but if you're the the child is eating poor foods and and again it's it's hard nowadays with McDonald's and Burger King and all the the fast food being right around the corner um, I still see them come into our office with a you know you can see the chicken chicken nuggets with them and stuff and you know you try to counsel them but um, you know so many stories of uh, one young lady she's now 16 but when she was 13 um, she wouldn't even communicate it was as she came into the office and, and her mother tried very hard to get her to to fill out the case history, just answer my questions, and you know, when a when a child or teenager comes into us, I I pretty much ask the child those questions because you can find out a lot more information not just from the parents, but asking and addressing them with the the child themselves. Um, but this one young lady, like I said, she's about 16 now, and um, but she wouldn't even speak. I mean, she had such such um, anger issues, so such. Um, just self-esteem issues and it was really great to watch that child in, in literally just a, between three and six months come completely out of her shell she started to smile we started to call her smiley and uh, she certainly wasn't wasn't called that in the beginning she really wasn't very uh, very pleasant to, to interview but it's 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 such a, a, a neat thing to watch over the years that these kids go from you know having all these issues to to into adults that are now have their children under care so we've watched quite a few stories like that but that one is what stands out the most to me so. yeah and there's a, a huge increase in in teen depressions and 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 issues I know that uh, a good friend of mine's daughter um, 
you know, uh, almost, well, no, com try to commit uh, suicide, and you're looking at a 15-year-old young girl, and you're thinking, wow, what in the world would make her, you know, want to do that? So, you know, the, the, we need to talk about it, and, and again, I think you touched on that. I know for a fact that this young girl is, is not eating properly, and was not getting adjusted and so forth. So it just there's a multifacetal um, aspect here. So we're coming close to the hour, and um, I'd like us to do a, another round and, and kind of. Uh, I'm going to start with Dr. Nate here. If you had a, a magic wand, Dr. Nate, how do you think the system can do could do better in the U.S. So those statistics that we're seeing that people are, you know, scoring themselves at 88% of anxiety, depression, lack of focus, extreme fatigue, and, and feeling on unhappiness, what, where do you think we could do better? I think that your statistic is probably the answer. The fact that so many people are going through this, but almost all of them feel like they're the only one. They don't think that anyone else is experiencing what they are or the way they do. Uh, and there's such a feeling of isolation, and frankly, there's a stigma against mental health issues, um, you know, probably in every country. So I think we've got to recognize that first and foremost. Secondly, let's start with less invasive approaches than just jumping straight to pharmacology. You know, the biggest thing I hear when I hear somebody that's on a, a psychotropic drug is, I, and I ask, how's that working for you? How's it make you feel? The most, one of the very common things I hear is it, it kind of makes me feel like a spectator in my own life that it really takes them out of the engagement of everything that's going on around them and puts them in a completely different uh, you know, sensory system. And when you listen to what Craig and I have talked about this evening is about our body engages based upon the information it receives from our environment, you know, and it makes all health decisions and calculations on what it needs to do to thrive based upon the sensory information it's given. If we are per perceiving ourselves as a spectator in our own life, we're not getting the accurate information, we're not going to be able to behave properly. So I think that that needs to be the last chain of events that happens in some ways, uh, a sequence for, for treatment of this. Um, just uh, recognizing that we're not alone and there should definitely be other things that we're doing and you know physical movement exercise and making sure our spines moving properly and that we're free of nerve disturbance is, um, is the top three on my list. Perfect. Thank you. Dr. Stacy. I'll if you don't mind carry on um, you know Nate, uh, Dr. Nate's answer here but how are we going to do this when one TV out of three commercial is drug related and by the time that it, a kid is 18 they will have seen 20,000 hours of drug commercial on TV so you know we are bombarded by that easy quick fix and, and pill so um, we're not going to change an entire uh, marketing industry but uh, Dr. Stacy, what do you think you we know, could do? I think the number one thing is education um, one of the things that concerns me a great deal is the number of children coming in on those psychotropic drugs. And it's because the parents think that that quick fix works and so they give it to their children when the medical doctor recommends it, not realizing that there are so many other contributing factors that need to be addressed first. And so I, I would for the most part just second Dr. Nate's answer because he covered all those different bases. Um, but it needs to be the number one thing that we're paying attention to from um, addressing adult issues to discussing issues when it comes to mental health with kids, when it comes to things like ADD um, and the over-medication that occurs there simply because they got sugar for breakfast so of course they're hyper and can't pay attention. Um, it all goes back to that education and then giving them a support system, giving them a resource. Um, the about real health doctors are, are fantastic, but people need local resources and to know who their local resources are, resources are that they can go to, who are going to support them and, and give them assistance and answers when they're in difficult times. And so those, those two aspects, I think, are going to help us to start to make that paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Dr. Azel, you talked about, uh, at the beginning, one of our local tele telecommunication companies in Canada created this, this Let's Talk About Mental Health, which I think was very well received, um, but what, um, and again, I'm not, you know, I was really pleased with that day and the awareness, uh, but we don't want to switch over to glamorizing mental health over finding the, the, the right resources. So 
what's your your take on on you know of course awareness is there but again we don't want to just create awareness to you know have no solution or no results so where do you think uh, in Canada we could do better two things one I want people to know that you're not alone I mean it, it's normal and natural to have feelings where you descend down and have moments or temporary periods of unhappiness. I lost my mother seven years ago. Um, you go through moments, life has its rough patches, but oftentimes smooth water follows the rapids. And it's in those moments where we are in the rapids that we need to understand how to stay in the boat. And I think the principal way that I would suggest and volunteer that isn't similar to what Nate and um, Stacy had recommended is I think we really have to start with our kids and empower them to have higher levels of self-esteem, to understand truly what their values are, how they can support those values by choosing the right friends, choosing the right people to gravitate towards, um, to stop looking for uh, stop looking for people that don't share those same values, the, 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 the movie stars and the musicians and things that have uh, not the shared values because it's when we start to perceive that we have these this fantasy life that we want and we look at our reality, the bigger the gap between what we fantasize about and what our reality is, the greater the level of unhappiness and depression. And I think if we can help people to understand and be grateful for the things that they have and empower them to improve their self-esteem and their self-worth, um, I think that's going to transcend big time. So I think if we can teach it in our schools, we start to have more open discussions about it. We start to empower our kids to, uh, to, to, to polish, nurture, and treat this body with uh, respect um, and, and to, to look at how to clearly establish what it is that people want rather than just getting bobbed around like a cork on the water trying to find purpose in their life trying to sort out why they're here I think if we can teach people how to find that purpose earlier on in life I think you'll see profound changes in people's mental health oh that's very true and, and um, I'm not sure if you guys saw this video on Facebook um, a couple months ago her name is Jessica and she's about all of three years old and is saying her affirmation in the mirror. Did you guys see that uh, little yes, video? Absolutely. I, I actually ended my talk uh, today on this and, and it was exactly that. What are you telling yourself in the mirror? What's your self-talk? And I think teaching the, the youth, as Stacy was saying, education is, is key and we have to teach our kids that uh, I think now with all the reality TV shows, uh, the kids are getting a distorted uh, view on, on reality. And I think you're right, Dr. Hazel, the expectations are, are unreal. And we will have some, some less productive day and, and days we're not going to feel that, that great. But it, there doesn't have to be a drug for, for, for that, you know, uh, bout of, of sadness and so forth. So. Um, Lastly, and, and I'll get uh, Dr. Denise to, to answer this one. We got a last question here. What is worse for you, the drugs or the sugar? Good question, oh. eh? <laughs> I have to pick between that? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, both, Natalie. But I think what we can control more is the sugar. I really do. Um, I, I truly do. I think that's a because a sh sugar is a drug. It's it's just a, a crazy drug. And hey, I partake uh, every now and then of that as well. Chocolate is my uh, my weakness as well. Mm. Um, but you know, Natalie, just a quick thing on that that other question that and to to go uh, with Dr. Hazel is you know so often we as parents put our children up on a pedestal and you know we 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 forget to have them be grateful and thankful for everything that they have. Um, a great story is our daughter uh, uh, many years ago spent the summer in Guatemala and um, when she was down there she was in a village and went to um, to celebrate uh, a little girl's birthday and these were very very poor children they had absolutely nothing. For, for this little girl's birthday what she got was a boiled egg and she was so just completely grateful for this egg. And when my daughter came home, she was probably 17, 18. She said, can you imagine what I would have done had you given me a boiled egg for my birthday? I said, yeah, you probably would have thrown it across the room. And she laughed, and, but she understood you know, just how grateful 
you know, uh, really ungrateful many of the children are. And I think if we can teach them that to be thankful for everything, not just our food and our clothing and all of that, but teach them to be thankful, I, I truly feel that, that that would change their concept of so much entitlement and things like that. And, and a lot of that does cause depression. When a, when a young person realizes just how great they've got it here in the United States, or I'm sure up in Canada as well, it just puts a different perspective on it. And, and as I always say, we are all too blessed to be stressed, you know, in, in, in most of us, especially living in the United States. Um, but to answer your question, I, I think sugar would be probably the, the worst, more, even so more than drugs, because it's so readily available. So, yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? It's so readily available. So thank you so much, guys. If any of you uh, of the doctors want to say uh, something that we might have not, uh, not touched? Because I think the big gist of this conversation is awareness, to be able to talk about it, education, and knowing that there are natural solutions for you to investigate, to start with. And then, you know, we always say chiropractic first, drug second and surgery last, right? I think we all live by, by that uh, motto. And I unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that they have alternative. And another big thing that transpired tonight is that people need to build their, their wellness team. And if people are, are not on their team, you know, uh, you know let, let them go and find the right people ask the people around you that have a similar mindset who they're seeing and I know as chiropractor probably 90% of the people we see in our office are referred from other patients so any uh, parting words on uh, on those comments uh, the, the doctors you got it you covered it the only thing, Natalie, that I would touch on is, uh, yes, formulate your team, but be very, very clear as to what your vision is for your health. Um, mm -hmm. You've got to be clear, because if you don't know which direction you're going, any road will take you there. So you've got to really sit down and clarify, where am I going, where do I want, and how am I going to get there? And then what resources, people, practitioners, do I need in place to make it happen? Yeah, very good point, Dr. Rizzo, because I think a lot of time people settle for what they have. And, you know, as, as, as chiropractors and seeing how many lives have been changed through the power of the chiropractic adjustment and a healthy nervous system, we have this passion to want to share that. It's just to us, it's just we want to help you know, turn people on and so that they can function more. So for the people that are, are listening that have never been to a chiropractor, uh, you know, we're, we're all over North America here, but, you know, you can always reach out to, to us and we'll make sure that we find uh, a, a good chiropractor for you that's going to work uh, being part of your team and also investigate who else in your community uh, you need. So, Elaine, uh, our wonderful moderator, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, no, it's a lot to think about. Uh, one thing I would like to say to those that are listening, anybody who's watching later, hashtag talk health. If you have further questions, you want to make comments, or talk about your interactions with your chiropractor. Uh, anybody that needs a chiropractor and doesn't know one that you can go to about real health, you can go to any of the chiropractor's sites or you can hashtag talk health and put out your question. It's viable on all of the social sites. Perfect. So Dr. Craig Hazel and Dr. Denise Rolette, Dr. Nate Bloomy and Dr. Stacy Rorkus, thank you so much for joining me tonight to talk about health. I love and appreciate you guys for taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this and we hope that the people listening uh, enjoy themselves, learn and at least got a different awareness on what chiropractic can do for them. So thank you very much guys. And thank, thank you Dr. Natalie Belchamp. You're welcome. <laughs>